people take a decade to start. And if you think about a lot of skills, a lot of skills you can pick up in 10 hours and 20 hours and 30 hours of just working. Like you're 14 episodes in on your podcast, you're so much better than you were in episode one. Absolutely. I mean, I haven't seen episode one, but it's like, you're so much better. I'm sure your questions are better and your use of Riverside and the microphones and the gear and the lighting, like you figured it all out and you're so much better than you were at the beginning. And you'll, you'll be better at episode 100 than you are right now. This is what the growth curve looks like. And so just the willingness to start and put in the 10, 20, 30 hours successful people just do it and expect to suck at the beginning and the people who aren't as successful they take a decade before they make the decision to do the first 10 hours like you just keep going like you make a mistake cool keep going your podcast sucked keep going you forgot to press record on an episode that happened to me great keep going like go 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 if we get so caught up about how we screwed up today or how we screwed up yesterday then we never make another thing where the momentum will happen if you continue to create need motivation watch the top 10 with believe nation Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and I watch these videos every day because I need them for motivation. Being around successful entrepreneurs every morning helps me believe that I can do great things too. It's like your morning coffee, but for your goals, kickstarting your day with a blast of positivity. So here is a challenge for you. Try watching one video every morning for the next 30 days, and let's find out together if they help you do great things too. If you're in, leave a hashtag believe in the comments below so I can celebrate with you. So today let's learn from me and my team's take on my top 10 rules of success. Enjoy. Rule number two is say yes to opportunities. What's been the downside of living a life without regret? Uh, I, I don't know, I can't think of something. If anything, I still uh, need to remind myself of not living in regret. Mm. I think it's just on bigger scale. What I've tried to do more over the past maybe five years has been, if I get an idea, I do something about it. If I get an idea, just take an idea to action and get the brain out of the way. But I can't think of a time when it's just completely backfired on me that I said yes to something. You know, I said yes to be on Nicholas's show and then, man, that <laughs> was a go. train wreck. Uh, <laughs> right. you know. But no, I mean, a lot, of, a lot of great things have happened by saying yes and just not judging. I've become pretty weird over the past five years where I say yes to things that I, I, I should not say yes to hmm. and no to things that I should say yes to. And I don't judge myself looking back on it. Even doing, I don't know how we got set here. Maybe you sent me an Instagram message or something. How did, how did yeah. this happen? Oh, I slid in your DMs for sure. A big slide. Okay, so you sent me a DM. I, I mean, people send me tons of DMs about all sorts of stuff, right? There was something in what you sent that, like, I like this guy. Yeah, I don't know if it was a video or a message or like a word that you used or whatever, but there was something like, I like this guy. Meanwhile, today I'm in like back to back shows and right. my team is like struggling to get my time to do other shows. Right. Right. Yeah. But we're doing this. Yeah. Why? Because I don't know, because I, I wanted to. That's why. <laughs> so and I just trust the vibe a lot more. And so just trust that when an idea comes to you, to say yes and give it a shot. Rule number three is believe in yourself. What are some of the most common characteristics that these people have that you think set them apart and there are, that make them successful? What, what are some common characteristics that most of these people have that we should incorporate into our lives? Yeah, I mean, it's a great question, Brian. Uh, the first one that I see is belief. Now, I'm biased because <laughs> mm. <laughs> belief is what I always look for in things. Yeah. Uh, but, but everybody has belief. They have self-belief. Like they, they, they believe in themselves and they believe in the thing that they're trying to create. And so somebody at the beginning of a podcast might say like, I don't know if this is going to work, but you don't have any proof until you start doing. So you have to believe in yourself to be able to get this thing going and that you have a voice able to contribute to the community. It's easy to say, well, there's a million podcasts out there and I'm way behind and I didn't go to school for this and all of these things that hold us back. Or you can say, yeah, but I got a unique story, unique voice, unique way of answering, uh, asking questions and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to launch this thing. So the, the self-belief uh, in getting the thing going. Rule number four is practice repetition. The first year I had 25 subscribers. So it's not like overnight success, right? Uh, and it took me five years to get to 2,000 subscribers. So most people would give up within, mm -hmm. like you're doing it for five years. So it wasn't that I did it for five weeks. It was five years and I still had 2,000 subscribers. And on my website, I show year by year how many subscribers I gained. In the first five years, I went from zero to 
2,000 something. And then the next five years, I went from 2,000 something to 1.3 million. And then you kind of kept growing from there. Uh, and so I wasn't really talented. Um, I'm introverted, I'm shy, I don't like being in front of the, the camera. Um, I've gotten used to it because we've done so many videos. You know, when you're 10,000, you do anything 10,000 times, you're probably gonna, you know, uh, get good at it. There's a, what's the Bruce Lee quote? Uh, I'm not afraid of the man who can um, punch, uh, tried 10,000 punches, but the man who- He can do one, one punch, punch 10,000 10, times. times, right? It's yeah. like, you're gonna get good at something if you practice something yeah. tons of times. So I wasn't very good, I, I sucked. I wasn't getting results, I wasn't making progress. But I, I liked, I wanted to just get better at it. And so with the repetition, with the practice, then doing a, a bigger setup like this, you know, becomes more, um, more normal. Also, to make sure you're actually taking action after watching this video, I've designed a special free worksheet just for this video. The worksheet will highlight our favorite lessons from the video that will inspire you to remember what you learned today and actually apply them. The worksheet will also give you space to write down what your key takeaways are and your specific plan of action to make sure you're getting results. If you want the worksheet designed specifically for this video, absolutely for free, there's a link in the description below. Go click on it and start building the momentum in your life and your business. I'll see you there. Rule number five is love the journey. What are the biggest regrets that you have that you would change if you could? Ooh, so that now, I don't know if I would change anything. So I, I think the biggest regret was probably, you know, again, that $20 million or $40 million deal being a perfectionist, losing out on that. Uh, if you took me back to the moment, I, I might change it. You know, like if you actually teleported me back there and I have, I have five minutes to talk to 20 year old Evan, I think, dude, I, I, I don't know if I could restrain myself from not talking to him, but in looking at my life now, it's like, I'm, I love where I'm at right now and everything I, that happened happened so I can get here right now so it's like the butterfly effect i don't know if i go home and like step on a butterfly from from the year 2000 if now i'm you know a mechanic or something you know i don't know no shout out to all the great mechanics but uh yeah in in my my best self says don't change anything but again if you take me back to that moment i hope i'm strong enough to resist the urge to to tell 19 year old evan something else Rule number six is transform pain to inspiration. We've all had painful moments in our life. And when you think about how do you find your purpose? Well, there's so many great causes. Why pick one cause or another? Well, it's because you have a personal attachment to it. So I want to solve what I think is the world's biggest problem. People don't believe in themselves enough. And I do it by helping entrepreneurs. I think entrepreneurs are going to solve all the world's problems. It's not government. It's not big business. It's going to be entrepreneurs. Whether I'm right or wrong, that's the thesis that I operate through. And I want to help entrepreneurs believe in themselves more because my biggest problem was and still is a lack of belief in myself to get to the next step. And so as much as I'm the believe guy, my biggest problem is still I don't believe in myself to do the next big thing. I believe in myself to do what I've done. I could do that again and again and again. But to do the next big thing is where I lack belief. And so I still need it myself. I think we all need it. And so that's what I'm trying to create for the world on a daily basis. And so if you think about for everybody watching, what was the most painful moment in your life? When did you feel completely worthless? And you may not be completely out of that now, but you're way ahead of where you used to be. And you know, if that was 10 years ago, you could go back and talk to the you from 10 years ago and give them some really sage advice on what to do. And then recognize that there are millions of people right now who currently are who you used to be and they need your help. You know, they could use your words of wisdom and they'll listen to you where they won't listen to Evan Carmichael or Marty Clay or Oprah Winfrey or somebody else, but they'll listen to you because you've been through the same thing that they are going through right now. And so doing that is the ultimate gift. Like when, and I'm sure you get this all the time when, when somebody comes up and talks to you and says, Marty, like your episode, changed my life, dude. Like your episode with blank or the way that you said this was the shift for me. That's the greatest feeling of all time. Like more than making the whatever thousand dollars on a video or winning some kind of award. It's knowing that the work that you do matters. Rule number seven is build good habits. I'm a big believer in chunking my, my days. So I do different things on different days. I think your actions need to map to your ambitions. So I look at my calendar. I think success is a series of habits. It's not reaching some destination. And I look at my calendar and say, if I did these things every week, would it lead me to be happy and successful? Monday is my mentoring day. Yeah. <laughs> so I spend that time mentoring my team. Tuesday is YouTube day. 
So I spend a whole day doing YouTube videos. I'll spend about three quarters of the day recording, and then the last quarter, because we got to do 20 videos in a week, so I'm at like full on all day recording. Rule number eight is overcome self-doubt. I think we all have these moments where we feel a lot of self-doubt and like, what am I doing? And why am I doing this? And what's my next path? Especially if you uh, don't have somebody in your direct vicinity, you know, if your parents aren't doing what you're doing, you know, like, did your parents write books at 16 years old? And yeah, it's like a lot of times the people around us might love us, but they're not doing what we want, what we want to do. And so it can be really hard to, to branch out and, and forge a different path. And so I was stuck trying to figure out, I already had some success and I had my, I had my, my website. I was trying to figure out, this all started with like a, what am I going to tagline my website? And what I realized in going through that is this is not just a tagline for the website. It should be something personal to me. What do I stand for? Not just what does my company stand for, but what do I stand for as a human? And then I bring that to my company. And the thing that just kept coming over and over and over was belief. And when you can figure out the thing that you stand for, it just allows you to keep coming back to center. Like Any time that I don't know or I'm struggling or I'm, uh, I mean, I, I, I have lack of um, faith in myself. Like it just comes back to belief. I need more belief. Rule number nine is take the first step. The hardest step is the first step. You know, like once you start your first video, it's easier to do another video and another video. And if you look at episode 100 compared to 14, it'll be the same thing. You're like, oh my God, I got so much better. Mm. And that's the process. But once you start moving, it's easier to just to stay in momentum than to go from nothing to that first step. And similar to your story, a lot of people sit on an idea, they take six years to take the first step. And then when they take the first step, they just keep going. It's just like, just don't wait six years next time. Take six minutes and just start. Mm -hmm. right? And so one of the things that I love to try to do is go from idea to action. So when you get an idea, just do some small version of it. Just get started. I had an idea for a podcast when I was driving through I was on my tour in 2019 and I'm driving through the desert in Texas and I had this idea to start a podcast with my friend, Mark Drager. And why am I thinking about Mark in Texas? All of a sudden, I hadn't talked to him for a while. When, why do I want to start a podcast with him? Normally, it would be overanalyzing, judging, thinking, I don't have time to do this right now. I'm on tour. I got a million things I have to do. I'll do this when I get back to Toronto in, in another eight weeks, right? It's like, there's no time to do this right now. But I've taught myself to do the opposite, that idea to action. So I'm driving, my wife Nina is beside me and said, Nina, let, we need to get a hold of Mark. Let's message Mark. And so we grab him on a call and I told him about the idea for the podcast. She's like, I'm in, like, let's do this. As soon as you get back to Toronto, I'm going to start getting ready for preparations. It's like, Mark, that's two months away, man. I, I'm not doing... Uh, by that time, it's like, that's like a decade away, dude. I'm not waiting two months to do this. He's like, well, when do you want to start? It's like, what do you mean? Today. Like, what do you mean today? Like today, we're going to, I'm going to drive to get into my Airbnb. Hopefully they have good internet and we're going to launch the first show today. It's like, but I don't even know what we're going to call it. I don't know what we're, I don't know what the first topic's going to be. I don't know how we're going to intro this. Like all those things that start, it's like, well, Mark, I'm going to be there in 90 minutes, figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got to the Airbnb, we figured out the internet and we had our first show. And was it, was it great? No. But the most important thing was you take the first step. And so just idea to action, expect to suck at the beginning. It's okay. It doesn't mean you suck as a human. It just means that you don't have the skill set yet. Well, you're not going to develop the skill set by thinking about it for another six years. You develop the skill set by going off and doing it and trying it and bumping your knees a couple of times. And rule number 10, the last one before some very special bonus clips is follow your momentum. I was on, on the website business before I moved to YouTube. I had a popular website. We had hundreds of thousand pages of content and I had a team there. And one day decided I'm going to just try this YouTube thing out. I started feeling my momentum go there, and I'm a big momentum guy. And one day I just decided, even though I'm making all this money on this website, I'm going to shut it down. I'm going to throw up a picture as my homepage, and I'm going to move my entire team over to YouTube because that's where my heart is now. And so I had, I think, eight people at that time. I'm not super great at looking back. I'm like forward and present and get hazy on the back. But I had about eight people, moved them all to my YouTube channel, and just threw up a picture and decided overnight that that's it. I'm moving in this new direction now. And people are spaced out over different projects and different series that we're doing. But Monday, I spend my day mostly working with them to help them get better. Because if they get better, my whole business gets better. How do you get better? Well, you have to do it. You can't just, the more you're spending time thinking, overanalyzing, overpreparing, judging yourself, I'm not good enough, this sucks, people won't care. That limits the one thing that matters the most, which is post. 
So you're already doing it. You're doing it in gym. You're not doing it in your faith anymore, and you're not doing it in maybe other areas, mm -hmm. but you've, you've done it in the gym. gym. So now do it with your social media. You just, it's just a decision to post every day. If you post every day, there'll be a lot of crap that will be put up. Yeah, and that's the one thing I'm trying to avoid. But it'll, how do you get through the crap is you create, you keep creating, you keep making more. Yes. Because it takes you a long time to even, what is your style? You have no idea. Like if you go to the gym once a week, how do you even know what exercises to do? You're gonna research and find something, but like you're not doing enough to even know if it's working. True. If you went to the gym once a week, you can get a little a definition, you might lose a little weight, you can put on some muscle, but like you don't even know what's working. That's a like is a bicep curl working? I don't know, you're, uh, like you, you do your sets, right? So maybe you're doing a bicep curl twice a month, mm -hmm. once a month. How do you know if it's working? You don't know, you're doing it once a month. It's by doing the repetition that you find out, okay, I don't, I don't wanna do this exercise, it doesn't serve me as much, I'm gonna do this one today for my abs, I'm gonna do this instead of that, whatever. You figure it out because you're in the mix doing it, mm -hmm. instead of just thinking about doing it. You don't know what your style is yet, you don't know what good content is yet, you're still playing. Yeah. So exactly. the way to do it is to, is to, even if you don't even post, I think you should post because it shows the journey, but even just a discipline of I'm gonna make something every single day. Mm -hmm. Then you start to get better at it. Then you can start to tweak. Then you can start to judge yourself. Then you can say, okay, next time I'm gonna make it a little bit better. Even how you wanna film this, you're like, I'm gonna film me over the shoulder and, and Evan's gonna be the main guy on camera. Okay, cool, that's a style. And maybe you like it, maybe it works, maybe you look at posts and you realize it didn't even capture your shoulder because you sat too far out or I went out of frame or whatever. It's an experiment. This might be your style. Or it might be a total waste of time, like who knows? Mm -hmm. But in the doing, if you did this, if you did interviews every day, you'll start to get better at interviews. If you, whatever you do every day, you're gonna start getting better at. If you're doing it once a week, you just will not get better. I didn't want to live with the regret of not knowing. And so I told myself I'd rather no one fail than not knowing. Even, even if it didn't work out, at least I would know because I, I, I didn't want to be an old man at 40, is what I would tell myself. When I'm 40 <laughs> and life is over and, and you're finished, you know, and you look back on your life, <laughs> you're going to regret not knowing. So uh, that got me into the, in the path of starting my first business, uh, you know, struggled, failed, some of the worst years of my life, eventually built and sold. I don't know how deep you want to go into that stuff, but coming out of high school, I mean, I had a lot of entrepreneurial drives and tendencies, but didn't really know where to put them. And so... I'm really grateful that I discovered entrepreneurship. And if you keep keep trying and keep improving, keep getting better, you will not suck anymore. So that's where a lot of people struggle. They know what looks good. They feel they can make it. They can't at the beginning. And so they stop trying. In terms of keeping going, how do you keep going when you're struggling and, and failing and not seeing the results? People ask me this all the time where, you know, it took me five years to get to 5,000 subscribers or whatever close numbers like that, where a lot of people, on, uh, they're, they're hitting that in the first few months. It took me five years to get there. I like sharing the journey because it's, it's great to see 3 million whatever now, but uh, five years, 5,000 subscribers. Uh, what kept me going through those days was I always focus on who I was serving instead of who I'm not. Now, what was your process when you first started? How did it evolve in terms of the videos that you were making initially and the quality? What did you start with? What was your type of equipment? And how has that kind of evolved? Because it's an interesting, uh, I, want, I want people to see the journey that, you know, people see you now, but you weren't always like at, at this position. Yeah, in terms of equipment, just start. You know, I, I will still make videos off of my iPhone. Right. And I've got 3 million subscribers and half a billion views or whatever's on the channel. Uh, I'll still make some videos off my iPhone. Don't let the fear of the, of the, of the lack of knowledge, the lack of gear be the thing that prevents you from getting started. You, you've got a great idea, a great mission, a great heart, and your excuses for why you can't do it is the only thing that's separating you from the people who are off winning. Um, for any of those people who say, oh, that person won off of my idea. Well, it's not your idea. You didn't, they had the same idea. It's not like they came and tapped your brain while you were dreaming and then sucked it out and sort of, they just did something with it. Right. And I'm really passionate about this, Tyler, because I think a lot of people have that, have that good heart you want to serve because you're so afraid. And meanwhile, dummies are winning off of your idea. Mm -hmm. Dummies with less ambition, less intent, less heart, less of a desire to serve, they're winning 
off of your idea because you are too afraid and they just got started. Right. You know, uh, the plan is never the plan. Like whenever you start something, you can have a great plan of how you think it's going to work out. Great. That's not how it's going to work out. You're going to have to adjust a million times. Like that's the story of an entrepreneur. It's the ability to adjust to the circumstances. Growing up, I always thought I wanted to be a banker. I love making money. And I thought that was my ideal job. And when I was 19 university, I met with two entrepreneurs who had started a business. They asked if I wanted to join. Uh, and I had to decide, hardest decision in my life, go take the six-figure investment banking job, traveling around the world, or own 30% of this startup and make $300 a month. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know what? I'd rather no one fail than not know. So I'll, I'll just do it and see what happens. I can, I can get another job in a year. It may not be the same job, but whatever. I'll, I'll get another job if it doesn't work out. Right. But I had to know. And uh, we struggled a lot. Uh, a lot of doubt, a lot of insecurities. I was you know, making no money and was too embarrassed and ashamed to ask my friends um, for help. Mm -hmm. um, whenever they wanted to go out for a party or pizza or beer, you know, that 20 bucks would that would be my entertainment budget for the month. <laughs> right. So I was, uh, you know, too ashamed to ask for help. And um, eventually we came out of it. What's How, old that? How old were you at the time? That was 19. Okay. Yeah. So 19, 20, like the first year of having my business. It's one thing if you're not trying and you're not getting results, but I was trying every day, all day long and just nothing, no results, just zero. And I remember I, I called them up and said, I, I have to... I have to, I, I quit. I have to go find something that makes me feel useful as a human being. Wow. Um, I wasn't, I wasn't, you know, in depression or suicidal or anything like that, but just, I felt useless. Mm. And mm. then I woke up the next day and I felt, um, okay, I can't quit yet because I'm going to regret it if I do. And, and I had, a, uh, there's a, there's a quote from Oprah that was in my head. That's just find another way to stand. Ooh, you, know, like, you have to find another way to stand. Like you don't quit, but you just find another way to stand. So, like, okay, what's another way that I can stand? I had to make money a, a bigger priority because it's just been service as the default. Mm. Um, I believe humans are built to serve, period. I think if you're not happy in life, it's because you're not serving. Mm. And we all want to wake up and feel like today matters. That what we're going to make today matter. Everybody, every human, whether we want to, you and I want to impact the world, want to have a big, giant mission impact, but some people just want to serve the 25 closest people to them. But either way, everybody, every human wants to feel like they matter, that they're going to make something today that will have an impact on somebody else's life. Great. That has to be number one. Money is a, is a, is a funny thing. I don't think most people grow up with a healthy perspective on money, uh, myself included. I think some people think money is everything. Money is the only thing that matters. That next person coming into the, to my store, that's my next suit, that's my next car, that's my next purse, whatever. And other people think money is the root of all you know, yeah, evil. Yeah. We've all heard the expression. And it's actually the love of money is the root of all evil, but we forget that part. It's just shortened until money is the root of all evil. And, and it's not. Money is not evil. Money is a tool. You need, you need money to do anything. Even charities need money to operate. And so how I've come to interpret it for myself and then teach others is money has to be in your top five. Hmm. If, if you're an entrepreneur, if you want to have success of any kind, money has to be in your top five. Even if you're a charity, money has to be in your top five. It just can't be number one. Hmm. Number one is your mission. Number one is the purpose. Number one is the impact that you had on that one girl, because in that one girl, there's millions of people who are like that, who will be moved by your message. Um, but how can you I used to fight with, how do I do both? Like, how do I, I but I want to make money, but I want to have impact, but I don't want to make money, but, but they work together. Hmm. They're not opposite. They're not conflicting. The more money you make, the more people you can go serve. If you, you know, back then could turn that part-time speaking thing into a full-time career with a team of people, you're going to reach more people. Me right now, having 36 people on my team, I can reach way more people than just Evan Carmichael by himself making a video. Yeah. And so I had to come up. I came more from the money as everybody had money. We're kind of selfish or greedy or did something to cheat people. Um, so money is more the root of, of evil. And I had to put it into my top five. But if you got it, number one, just, just bounce it. Keep it. It's important. Just <laughs> bounce it from the top spot because it's something more important. So the number one question that nobody is asking you, and I'm going to ask Roland, which is going to be fine. Before they devise a strategy for YouTube is... 
What do you sell? What do you sell? And for everybody here, like when you came in, well, the people I met, like, well, what do you sell? So that was the first question. What do you sell? We had a relationship expert over here, counseling. We had a marketing uh, consultant. So this could be consulting. This could be books. This could be, you know, if, if Roland wanted to sell more tickets to this next year, right? Is that, is that a goal? No, uh, no. not, not okay. through that okay. channel. Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> we have other channels for that. But cool. Yeah. So like you start with what do you want to sell? Because I want you to generate more leads. Because if we can increase... So you can put cons consulting on there. You mentioned that. That's part consulting. of it. Consulting. Okay, cool. Consulting. So if we could help Roland get these three things, he would spend a lot more time on YouTube. Same thing everybody here, right? If you're going to grow your business from your content, you would, you would justify spending more time on it. Right now, it, now it's okay to go after what may be hard. Now all of, the, all of the problems we came up with here, right? All of the reasons why you can't do videos go away because it's generating revenue for you. In the book, there's, there's the structure of how to do a perfect thought leadership yeah. piece uh -huh. of content. I would hone in on that. I, I would guess you would be great at your storytelling. You could easily tell a three, four, five minute story or more. Your story, client story, uh, somebody you've mentored, um, something you see happening with young real estate agents, salespeople, addicts. Like, there's lots of stories you could tell. I think you'd be great at that. Sure. I think the practical advice piece, you'd probably be great at that too. So, okay, to solve this problem, do one, two, three. Step one, do this. And I'm sure you could. You've just had enough experience. You can. You can. Even if you had a point form, you could talk to those points and be eloquent in in tons of value. Where most people struggle is, is the opening. So you got to hit me with something that you believe that, that most people would find different or weird. The more you do it and the more you start to see, like you'll start to get hooked on it too. But it, at the beginning, I didn't do it as much as I do now. But then when you do a little bit, like when you pour belief into one person and then a year later or six months later or whatever, they come back and they say, dude, like I took your advice and look what I made. And then they give you all the credit. You're going to do the same thing. It's like, nah, like I'm 1%. Like you did the work. But when you see that, it's so fun to see it come back in six months or a year or whatever to see their growth that it just makes you want to go and find more people to do the same thing with because it doesn't take that much time. Like how much time did I actually invest in, into your podcast? Not a lot. Like it's, it's an hour, two hours. I don't know what we spent. Well, um, we had to actually redo episode number one because I messed up on something. So it was like two hours, maybe. <laughs> sure. But like two hours, uh, how many years ago is that? You know, yeah. not that long. I mean, it's a, I, we haven't, we've been in touch, but it's not like we're chatting every day. And that had a huge impact. To, to be able to shift somebody's life in an hour or 25 minutes or 15 minutes, like to know that you can do that. And it's then they have the ripple effect or butterfly effect. The more that you see that come back, the more it just makes you want to keep doing it. For the people who are in million dollar, in the million dollar sales program right now, that you're launching a new YouTube show where you're going to be coaching people one-on-one -on -one, and it's free, but it's going to go on to YouTube. And so it's yep. not some bait and switch afterwards and you're surprised this is going to go on YouTube. They know in advance. Right. But you say that access to Mark is, is really difficult and very expensive. Yep. To get one-on-one -on -one time with Mark is, is not possible or it's going to be very, very expensive. But you're going to get it for free because you're part of this program. Oh, I like that. The million dollar sales pro and you know, who wants it? And you have people who, who say yes, right? yep. they right. put up their hands and say, Hey, please pick me. I like so that. now when they come on, you say, Hey, here's John. He's part of our million dollar sales pro. Now what's the million dollar sales. Pro? Now we're talking about it without it being a sales pitch. Right. And then hopefully John says something good. Like, Oh my God, Mark, your million dollar sales pro is my favorite program. Right. I say, great. And then you say, okay, John, how can I help? And then oh. John tells you, where he's struggling and then you just help him. You don't, you don't need tons of prep work or, you know, an entire dossier on John. You just show up and you know, he wants to sell and he's stuck somewhere and then you go solve his problem. I think if you know what you want to do, that's the time to focus and build and grow. Like if you want to build the number one podcast for entrepreneurs, great. Then when somebody says, hey, do you want to join me at truck driving school? You know, you say no, because you know what you want to do. You have the path. But if you don't know what you do and, and you like this, you know, you'll often go on these ebbs and flows whenever you don't know what to do. The best thing is to say, yeah, I'll join you at truck driver school. Yeah, 100 percent. Right. Like 
You go once and you see, yeah. right? Just like people who decide that pizza is their favorite food before they've tried sushi or burritos or anything else, mm -hmm. right? You want to taste it and try. So if you don't have clarity over what you want, you're not going to figure out what you want sitting on the couch. You got to get out there and do. But if you do have clarity over what you want, then, then that's the time to put the blinders on and focus. So I'm building this thing. Don't distract me with your other opportunities. Thank you. I love you, but I got to build my thing. Every successful business is a combination of what you love doing with what gives value to people. If you love it, but it doesn't serve anybody, you've got a hobby. Right. It, it could be a really fulfilling hobby. It makes you feel great to sit in your basement playing the guitar. But if it's not bringing value to anybody, it's just a hobby. Mm -hmm. Some people go the other way and they're only chasing what there's opportunity in, but they don't love it. Mm -hmm. Like, don't go chasing NFTs or Clubhouse or crypto if you don't love it because you're going to get destroyed by the people who actually love it. Right. And so it's in that intersection of what do I love doing? That can that can be of service and bring value to other people, and that that's this, the success story of every single entrepreneur who's made it. They love the thing, and it brings value to people. So if you love it, awesome. Now you got to figure out how do I use my my skill set, my talent, what I love doing to help other people. If you're only talking about health and body, for example, for two months, mm -hmm. and you make references to other stuff, but you're really just building an audience about people who care about health and body, right? But then if you start introducing grow your own food, I, I kind of connects to health because now I get my own organic food, but I may not be down that path too much. Right. And then I want the other stuff. So like we, we need to create a consistent schedule where you're directly hitting the main points. Yep. Gotcha. Okay. Within each direct point, you're going to be indirectly pointing to the other ones. But you don't want to have a month go by and you haven't directly hit one of the points. Right. Because the people who came for that now feel left out. Yes. And maybe not unsubscribe, but like stop watching the videos because like, oh, he doesn't talk to me anymore. Yeah, he's off topic. Yeah. According to that individual. Right. That makes sense. And I may care a little bit about the other stuff, but I really care about this. Mm. And so if I know that you're not making it anymore, why am I going to keep watching your videos? Gotcha. Because you think of it as this holistic thing, which is great. Most people will come in for the thing they care the most about, and then they'll slowly learn about the other things. Like, oh, yeah, okay, huh, hmm, right? But if they're not getting their thing, then they probably bounce. The goal today, though, is just figure out if name cheap the, the right option. That's it. That's our goal. Yeah. That's our philosophy one truth. And maybe you figure that out in 20 minutes after watching one training. Or maybe it takes you three hours of going through it to kind of figure it out. But the idea is this is the goal for the rest of the day. That if you hit that, it's like, hey, pat on the back. Like I set a goal and I hit it. I right. said I was going to do it and I did it. Okay. And so if you complete do... that, you can always add more. You can always, you know what? I'm going to try actually building my website instead of just researching. I'm going to try just making a home page and just playing around with some text and maybe doing, but it's not the requirement for the day. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're lowering, we still got a big vision and big mission of what we're going to accomplish, but we're lowering our expectations for what we want to do today because we don't want to train ourselves that you set goals and then don't follow through. And then you feel like, you know, you don't feel great because you said you're going to do 10 things and you did like half of one. Why say yes to uh, the little people, if you will? So probably multi-part answer in that one too. You guys are asking some good ones. Um, for me, it's always a vibe thing. So my team is probably upset that I'm doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. You know, my team probably has all sorts of things that they would love to have me on, and I'm behind <laughs> on a million projects. And, you know, I mean, they'll I'm be happy eventually, though, Evan. They'll be happy eventually, I promise. So. <laughs> yeah, just the, the, the demands on the time as you get busier and bigger, you know, that's one of the hardest things to constantly figure out. Um, and, my biggest fear is disappointing people and letting people down and, and part of that happens every day. You know, like mm. people would email me their cover or DM me and I never see it because we get just, it's not possible to see everything that comes in mm -hmm. and that somebody might be disappointed by that, you know, tears me up and I have to keep going. Mm. Um, so why do I say yes? It's, it's a vibe thing. I say yes to things that I shouldn't say yes to, but it just feels right. So I say yes to it and then don't judge it afterwards. Maybe, maybe it's the greatest interview of all time with gut check. So that was a win or maybe it just sucked. Right. And, and I, I, I made the wrong call somewhere and, and next move on, but I don't look back and say, Oh, I wish I, I did this or didn't do that. Um, so I say yes to people 
based off of a vibe, period. You know, awesome. Um, I say yes to, I said yes to writing my book based off of a vibe. I said yes to making some videos. Just, it just feels right. And I got into the habit of not judging what feels right and just doing it, even though it doesn't make sense. Just say yes and go instead of getting locked up in procrastination mode and judging this versus that. It's like, how do I feel? That one, perfect. That's what we're doing. Um, and as a logical, like I love, I like thinking through things. That's, that didn't come natural, but I had to learn just to trust the intuition, trust the feeling. University is great if you want to go be a doctor or a lawyer or an accountant or some professional designation where it doesn't change that often. But staying on top of online marketing is not where you go to university for. So there's this giant demand and, and where's the education coming from? Mm -hmm. Even a book, like, I, you know, I have a book, I got a couple of books. The books takes a year to write and then, you know, another six months to get out. By the time it's in somebody's hand, the information in the book is already at least, at least 18 months old. Mm -hmm. So if I was to make a book on YouTube, it'd be totally different in 18 months. So right. the advice is already out of date. So it's why people are going to YouTube now to learn about these things. Mm -hmm. I think some of the other things you can still teach in classes and from books, but anything that's shifting really quickly, you want the most recent up-to-date information. Yeah. So everybody's just going to YouTube to learn how to do entrepreneurship, online marketing, set up their digital business, et cetera. You could do this. Okay. Where you do it over something like Instagram Live to help build your Instagram audience up, or okay. it could just be a, a, a separate Zoom that you do either for paying members. So, hey, as a bonus, you also get a one-on-one -on -one with Grant. Okay. Right? And then so, do you, sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but then yeah. do you take this and put it back into YouTube? Meaning do yes. you, okay. Uh, not kinda, all of these, like I have a daily show here. Not all of them get cut for YouTube. Some of them, if it's really good, it'll get cut. My team just decides sure. which one goes up. Um, but yeah, so I, I go live daily on Instagram uh, and okay. that helps the Instagram audience and also creates content for other potential platforms. I mean, this, this could get cut up into a million different ways for different platforms, depending on what comes out of it. Sure. Um, but that you could have it as a bonus. So, hey, here's my membership and it costs X per month. But if you sign up for the annual deal, you also get a one-on-one -on -one with Grant that Got then it. can be turned into content, right? So you use it to... You can use it to get people into your program. Um, if you love it and, and you want to do more of it, then uh, maybe you have enough members to, to back it up. If not, then you can do it for free. And people get to see you coaching so that if it's free, then it's public. If it's free, then it's going to be online. And some people may not want it to be public. So say, okay, great. Well, I've got a, I've got a coaching package and I've got my membership program where you can train with me every two weeks. Sure. Right? So the free gives you the attention that then shows off you as a coach, because if you want to sell a membership program where you're going to be coaching people, I need to see you as a coach. Right. Not just a thought leader talking to the camera. I need to see you like get, get the bug eyes like, oh my God, Grant, I can't believe what you just said that saved my life. We don't think about the future regret enough because the starting the thing is painful because there's a chance of rejection. There's a chance of it not working out. Um, you know, as an example, like real live moment right now. So just before this show, I was talking to Mark Randolph on my Instagram live. We're doing an interview with him for my YouTube channel and he's the co-founder of Netflix. And so when that came across my table, I was like, do you want to interview Mark Randolph for your channel? Do you want to have a conversation with the co-founder of Netflix? I'm like, yes. <laughs> but then immediately all of the fears said like, oh my gosh, I don't know anything about him. I, I don't, uh, what if I ask a stupid question? What if I don't? And so there's a tendency to then go instantly into delay. Like, yeah, I like that, but let's, I'll do it. How about next month or next whatever? And you just, you push it off, but really it's because I'm afraid. I'm just afraid, right? I'm afraid of, of, especially in a live setting, right? It's not like it's pre-recorded. This is going to be a live setting with a live audience. What if I just ask something stupid or, or something happens? And this is still 20. This is still now. This is just, just happened wow. eight minutes ago, right? Wow. So it's not like I'm over this and it was something that looking back 10 years later, but I constantly remind myself that I want to jump into the things that make me afraid, especially if the fear is, other people's opinions, right? Wow. Like if you're afraid of jumping into a, uh, 
an alligator's mouth. Like, uh, yes, that's a good, like, you should be afraid of that. Yeah, of that's probably stupid. You know, don't do that. Yeah. But, but being afraid to be on stage or to make a video or to do an interview or to launch your program mm -hmm. is really just fear of other people's opinions, judgments, expectations. And as long as you live inside that fear, mm -hmm. you will never do anything great. This idea of having your purpose in it maybe fill up all of your life. Does happiness come from everywhere? Does everything, you know, do you have to be living your purpose and like your job has to do it, you know, everything. Does it all have to come together like that? So everybody's going to have a different version of balance. How much yeah. time you want to spend, like what makes a good father? Brandon has his version and Michael Jordan has his version and I have my version and we tend to compare ourselves against other people, which can be really detrimental because we usually kick ourselves down instead of forward. So the key is then thinking, well, what does my version of balance look like for me? And so how much time you want to spend with your kids? How much time you want to spend with your wife? How much time you want to spend in your business? How much time you want to spend volunteering? Whatever is important to you, working out, there's no right answer, but there's a right answer for you. And so the purpose should be baked into everything. The purpose is not just a, here's what I'm going to do in my business and I'm going to shut it off when I go home, right? So my purpose of believing in people, I believe in my son, I believe in my wife, I believe in my friends. It's not something that I have to put on. It's who I am. And so it's figuring out who you are so you can show up the best version in every situation. Also for yourself. Like my biggest problem is I need to believe in myself more as well. So it's not just for other people. It's an internal game too. And so, you know, if you're looking at there's what we do and then there's a the reason behind it. If you focused your efforts and just got your 10. Yeah. That then allows you to go hire more team to go do more things yeah. and make things so much easier. So what's our clearest path to get to 10? So if we now look at the, the YouTube channel, they have to be separate channels. You can't have an English and Chinese channel on the same channel. They are separate. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Where do I spend more time right now? On my Chinese channel. All right. I won't understand it. Yeah. I could have Nina look at it and say, what is she saying? <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it probably won't hit that many people in China. Right. But the Chinese population in North America will be able to watch it and see. Yeah. You, you're probably going to be the only one talking about complex trauma therapy on YouTube in Chinese. For now, blue ocean. Yeah. And again, you need 10. Right. We're not trying to go, eventually, we're going to go change the world yeah. and be in English and in Chinese yeah. and, and Down the road. billions of views and everything. Great. Right. Cool. But the path to be able to get there is just, again, the sequence. What are the steps? Because if you do everything, you're working with all these consultants and all these different things in English and Chinese and all. It's like, then again, this. Lots of opportunity, but very little progress. Right, right. Stay focused. Stay focused. Yeah. So the first goal is get the 10 okay. in Chinese, yeah. focus on Chinese, yeah. uh, do the webinar in Chinese. For Tim, ask him about connections in Chinese. You have your Chinese people that you hired. Okay, guys, we need to get 10 people that I'm going to work with one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. The YouTube content can be in Chinese. Yeah. Because if you start making regular... Chinese content on YouTube for complex uh, trauma therapy, right? Everybody who is helping you can now use that content. Yeah. So the woman in California can take some of those clips and put that into the webinar. Yeah. And the people in China that you hired can send some of those videos or clip them and, and use them in their sales process. That's a good point. And Tim yeah. can filter some of his people and, and send off this video in China. So like if you have content going up, people will discover you on YouTube but your current network can also help share some Promoted. of the stuff for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right? that's a good point. Yeah. You don't need millions of views on your videos yeah. yet. Yet. Yeah. Like, we'll get there, right? Yeah, that, yeah. Totally that's the, that's the mission. Yeah. But we need, we need the right people seeing it who might then hire you. To be a great leader, you have to care more about the people on your team hmm. as humans than you care about them winning in your business. You need them to win as people more than win with you. And I see everybody that we meet, we're, we're on these parallel paths together. So us here, we're, we're on this parallel path for this you know, 20, 25 minutes together. And maybe I never see you again. Maybe we launched the greatest joint venture of all time. You know, we're, but right now we're on this parallel path of this, of this show. And everybody who comes into your life, into your businesses, uh, you're on a parallel path with them. And your goal should be to understand what their goals are and help them accomplish it. And sometimes that's with you. Sometimes the best thing they can do is be with you for the rest of your lives because you make each other better. Maybe the two of you make each other better. You complement each other, you bounce off each other and you're better together than you are individually. But maybe at some point, 
the person with you should leave. They'd actually be better served going somewhere else. That they love working with you, but it's actually limiting them because they're they've got something greater calling them that you have to go push them away to go off and do. And I think that is the core of leadership when you can love people and want them to win more than you want them to win with you. When people feel that, you get their hearts and their souls where most people just show up with their brains. You get everything because they know that you want them to win and they're not questioning the loyalty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And um, that's, that's, that's hard. And that's not, I don't think, taught in, in schools. But really, you just have to care for the person in front of you and want them to win as a person. And if you make that your goal, that if people are around me, they're going to level up. Anybody who comes in contact with me has to level up. If you're on my team, you need to level up as a person. Otherwise, I'm a failure as a leader. I don't care if you did all the work that you were supposed to do. If you're still mindset wise, habit wise, routine wise in the same spot that you were last year, that's my fault. And it's accepting responsibility for their lives. I think that's a good leader. I think that's a good husband. I think that's a good father. I think that's what leaders do. The thought leadership content is probably the least important for you, especially yep. at the start. That's where you're just speaking direct to camera. Right. So the biz dev show gets you clients. Like you don't even need to grow your social presence for you to 10 X your business just from relationships that you create. Right. And that's in the biz dev show. It's not about making you look good. It's about making your guests look good so that you can create a relationship to then work with their sales team. Right. Right. Yeah. And so those videos don't necessarily have to have tons of views. The ROI is the relationship that you just created. That's right. The coaching show, the show me the process show is usually the best show to make if you're good at coaching. Like the caveat is if you suck at coaching, <laughs> you get exposed. It's like if they came and brought you this problem, it's like, oh, I don't know what to do with that. Then that, that's a problem. Right. But if, if you're good and you have a deep well of knowledge, it's actually the best show. Because it's usually the most fun to create because you're actually helping somebody. You're not yep. just talking in your house to a camera. Um, and it shows off how good you are because there's lots of people who can talk a big game. What you just said, I could say too. I could say, here's what, here's what we do. We got to uncover your childhood trauma. We got to find the repeated patterns that have hold, held. I could say all the things you said, but it doesn't mean that I can go and do what you do. That's right. And so there's lots of, and, there's, and especially in the sales world, there's a lot of sales coaches and trainers who can talk a great game, but then when they're face to face with a, with a client who's struggling with sales, they don't know what to do or how to help. Somebody's starting day one, no resources. They, they want to start putting content into the world. What is the number one thing to think about? Is it process? Is it, you, you mentioned some mindset things, but the actual doing, if they're going to start today, what advice would you give them? You, you pull out your phone, you know? If you go on YouTube, you turn it sideways and you press record, <laughs> right? Like, I think it depends on the industry that you're going to, you know, what your niche is. I, I specialize in education, thought leadership, um, specifically entrepreneurship, personal development. If that's you, then people over focus on like quality content. They think of quality of production, the camera mm -hmm. you use, the microphone you use, the lighting, the editing, and, the, yeah. and, and that barely matters. Inside of thought leadership education, what matters most is quality of thought. Can you teach me something that I don't know? Your job as a thought leader is to take what's in your head and plant it into your audience's head. Now, if you're, if you're a videographer, uh, then yeah, you're real, better look, fire. If you're a videographer, I don't want to see a bunch of YouTube videos with like shaky hand on your cell phone, right? I mean, you're not going to get hired for that. But if you're a speaker, you're, you're, you want to be an expert, your coach, your trainer, um, you're selling consulting, then it's, it's not so much about how good it looks. It's more about how good you are. And we overthink and overanalyze and overprepare and over script all of our videos. If you thought about how much time you spent, and I, I mean, I'm guilty too. Go back and watch my first videos. I did all the same mistakes everybody else did as well. My first video, I'm in a, I'm sitting down. I'm in a suit, super uncomfortable. We have the perfect setting and lighting and all this stuff behind us. And, and that was not, that video was not fire. I mean, it's, it's taken off because it's my first video and people want to see what video number one is, but it's not like it was some amazing video, uh, because I suck because I was nervous and I didn't have a great message. So the most important thing is just get the phone out and imagine 
you're not speaking to a lens, but imagine you're speaking to a human and it can either be yourself. Like you're going to sit down with, I would sit down with 19 year old Evan and like, here's what you need to know. 19 year old Evan replace the camera lens with person's face or an actual friend of yours. There's so many things that you could do. Right. What most people get wrong is just the sequence. So well, like the steps. Yeah, I want the sequence. In what order to do it in. Right. So ultimately, the goal is to do everything. But the path to be able to do everything is to do one thing. Yes, to start. Right? Stay focused. Because if you try to do everything, it, nothing happens. Or it's like all of these little tiny things. So you do yeah. little in Chinese and a little in English, and you still have, you care for your father. Yeah. And you still have your job and like all those Spread other stuff. Spread it too thin. And then like nothing ends up happening. Right. Little right. bits of all these things. Yeah. So ultimately, to accomplish your mission... You're going to need to be able to do this full time. And then you're going to need to have a team. So it's not just you doing everything, right? Yeah, yeah. At the beginning, it's you part time because you're doing other stuff, right? Great. So in our part time hours, how do we get the most out of the few hours that you have every day to work on this to generate enough money that you can then leave the job? Right. To then generate more money so you can hire a team to then help you do the big thing. Right, right. So we want to do everything. I love it. You know, it's great. Yes. Thank you. (laughs) And what's the market to go after that will pay you fastest inside your mission? Not just like go get another job, but inside of what you want to do. Is it English market? Is it Chinese market? Is it selling a specific course or program or training or coaching? What's the thing that can generate the fastest revenue inside your mission so you can leave your job and do this full time? You hit it right on the head. Our intention is not to be rah rah, everything is great in the world. It literally is to turn the negative into a positive. And so finding ways to do that, like what you just mentioned, is key. It's yeah. key for us to reach people. So then it's just you're picking which negative. Yeah. And the bigger the negative, the bigger the audience you can build and impact you can reach. Yeah. The smaller the negative, the smaller the audience. That's powerful, yeah. Right? So it's just finding bigger negatives. Yeah. So you know, whether you talked about the vaccine during COVID, whether you talk about the election cycle that's coming up in the US, whatever the things are that you care about and you're willing to share, yeah. Prime Minister. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually not a big one, right? Like your audience is in Canada, right? So you're talking about our Prime Minister, whether you hate him, love him, why, how to problem solve, how to fix the next election, whatever. Yeah. It won't get you tons of impact because it's only to Canada. Yeah. You talk about the US election coming up, it's going to have a much bigger impact. Yeah, and for now, like our hope is to reach the English speaking world because that's that's right. that's our ability to reach. You can even take a stance of um, even if you don't want to be critical or political, right? Like uh, is Biden too old to run? <laughs> right? You don't you you don't you might have strong views on Biden that you may or may not want to share. But you could flip it in a positive way to say, okay, like so this is a concern. It's like you know, we want we want our leaders to be healthy. So how do you live a healthy life into your 80s, 90s, yeah. 100s? And you flip it into a health article yeah. without you saying, Biden is like the worst or whatever you want to, right? So you're taking it in a different way. What are some things that people can do to you know, always take their belief to the next level? What are some of the things that you're doing consistently to consistently build that belief so they can get it to that, that level where it's like, until it becomes a reality, that, what, what their goals are? Yeah, I mean, I know we got to pop, but but two quick things. One is to start to surround yourself more with the people who are embodying that belief, right? So, and whatever, it's not just believing yourself, whatever you want more. You want more courage? Be around more courageous people. You know, if I want to be a better parent, I'm going to hang out with my parents more. If I want to be a better visionary, I'm going to hang out with, you know, Steve Jobs more. And and I can't meet Steve Jobs, but there's, there's enough of his content out there that you can be around it and learn it. Uh, so... That's step number one. If you love Tyler, great. If Tyler makes you feel like things are possible, if Tyler gives you more courage or commitment to excellence, follow him. Subscribe to his shows. Be, have Tyler. If Tyler was living with you every day, you're going to grow and you're going to get more courageous and have more commitment to excellence. So, so have him live with you by watching all his stuff constantly. So I'm around Elon Musk and Steve Jobs and Oprah Winfrey and these people every day. It's what I needed when I was 19, and it's still what I need today at 40, and, and that's why I do what I do. So step number one is, is to radically change your environment, to, to have the people, from, from the things that are on your wall to the, what's in your Instagram feed, your YouTube feed, from the, from the clothes that you wear to the, the thing that you're drinking, right? Like all of it. 
is, is, is a reminder of who you want to be. And then, so that's, that, that gives you the framework to start to feel it more. Step two is, and there's only two steps, you got to do something. Right. Like you could watch Tyler all day long and get courage. Great. But now you got to, Tyler's not going to come and make the call for you. Tyler's not going to come and launch that drink company for you. Tyler's not going to come and, right? So you have to do it. Right. But what, what Tyler can do, what I can do, what whoever can do is give you that little bit of motivation, that little bit of courage to then take the step and to right. build momentum. So you need that motivation daily because you might be super fired up and inspired today. Awesome. You're going to wake up tomorrow and go back to not having as much courage and confidence and belief. And so you need that as part of your daily routine to get you inspired to the point where you do, where you then take the action that you're afraid to do. The biggest failure I had was I quit on my business partner. So the, this is why I, I try to encourage people to keep going and believe and all, cause that was me. Cause I needed it. Cause because 20 year old Evan that badly needed that message. We were not having success. I was a year in on this business. I turned down my dream job to, to take this, you know, company opportunity. All my friends were, were getting rich, doing all this stuff. And I was too poor to go hang out with them. And I was too embarrassed to tell them that I was broke, right? It's, they want to hang out and I can't cause 20 bucks for pizza and beer and then like bowling night or whatever would be too much. Right. And so I said, I can't, I'm hustling. I'm living the entrepreneur life, you know, not, not, I like that. I can't, I make 300 bucks a month, guys. I can't afford this. So at some point it just got to a breaking point where I can't handle this anymore. You know, I, 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 I'm, I'm busting my butt like every day, wake up, it's dark. I go to my partner's condo. It's dark. I leave and go home, right? Bean salad for lunch every day, just day in, day out. If you weren't working hard and you're not getting results, that's fine. You can kind of understand. But when you're grinding every single day, all day and have no other life and you're still not getting results, I don't know. I, I think at some point it just beats you down This to, 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 to I can't take this anymore. And so at a family event, um, I think it was Christmas or Thanksgiving or whatever, um, I told my business partner, like, I can't do this anymore. I need, I need to feel like I'm a valuable person <laughs> uh, and just, this isn't working. And so I, I quit. And then I, I cried like crazy, had stuff come out of my eyes, my nose, uh, you know, I was just totally lost. And um, the next day I woke up and felt I can't quit yet. Cause I'm going to regret if I quit now. I know again, when I'm an old man at 40, I'm going to regret this life changing decision, but I can't keep going the way that I'm going. I, I have to find something else because this is not working as it is. And that's where I had a aha moment at kind of at my bottom, which was, I'm not the first guy to try to build software before and sell it. Like, who's mm -hmm. done this? And the first guy I thought of was Bill Gates, who started Microsoft. So I thought, okay, how did Bill Gates do it? I'm going to learn his story, and maybe there's something I can learn from it. And, and I did. I looked at how Microsoft got started. Not, not how did he make a mix, an extra million dollars now. Like, who cares? You know, makes a million dollars a second just, just sitting around. How did he go from zero to one? That's what I wanted to do. And I looked at a story and copied that strategy. And shortly after, I had my first deal for $13,500 in my business. And, um, you know, grand scheme of things, that's not a lot of money, but holy cow, when you're making 300 bucks a month and you get a 13 and a half K deal, deal <laughs> my dude, it's, it's, it's a, um, I was rich. Like I won the lottery. Um, you know, I have, I have, I have dollars hitting my bank account. Uh, I felt rich and more important is like hope, like, oh my gosh, something finally worked. Like maybe this could actually happen light at the end of the tunnel. And, and then I just modeled that strategy to keep getting more and more and more growth. To learn how to overcome any fear, check the video right there next to me. I think you'll love it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. I'm afraid all the time to do stuff, like anything new. But how do you deal with it right now? I just go through After, it. Yeah, it's like... I, I just head in, go through it. So there's two things. One... There's a lot of people out there, they want to know. No, no, no. So I use a push and a hug, what and I that? use both.